cool package from Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. Please. Oh my God. I'm in my usual unboxing spot. I crammed down here, might have fallen. So I'm gonna let them float and warm up the temp. It's time. What's up, YouTube? It's Mike here back with another video. Yet again, I've got some new arrivals for you in this video today. Also have a lot of different things that have been going on down here in the fish room over the past couple weeks. However, we're not gonna get into all of them. Uh, I'm gonna keep you guys hanging. But I do want to show you guys some cool new pickups, including one of which that I got from Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch that I think you guys are going to really like. So I'm going to get into that in this video today. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Blake from Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch, but he, uh, he does some cool breeding of different types of turtles and tortoises. But uh, he recently had up for sale some pretty cool animals that I've been interested in for a while, so I had to take advantage of it. Now, I don't think this is something that he bred himself. I think uh, a friend of his is breeding these, um, but I absolutely needed one once I saw them. I had to grab one. So, let's check it out. Delivery's coming. FedEx has arrived. So, we've got a cool package from Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. And uh, let's open it up and see what we got. Oh. Well, the package was on its side. Very cold. We'll see. It was kind of like crammed down here. Might have fallen by accident. I don't know. Let's see what. But let's uh, let's open it up and see how, how we're doing. Be very careful here. It's very cold. Oh. You guys see? Oh, so adorable. It's a Chinese soft shell turtle, an albino. So very, very excited. What a beauty. And I've already got a tank set up for him, so we're gonna introduce him or her to her new tank. I set up this little tank and it's actually on an overflow system so eventually what I can do is I can run this a little higher and I don't have to do water changes on it. It's just going to drop back into the 1500. Uh, I even have a pump and stuff going for it. So I ran this for a while but because this turtle is so small I want to have a really low water level, make it easy for him to be able to get in and out um, and get up and get air. So. I also wanted to have some substrate, so I took some of the red garnet sand, although it looks brown here. I took some of the red garnet sand from the 1500 and we put it in here. I might add some more eventually, but for now, that'll be just a little bit so he can bury himself, him or her. We don't know the sex. Uh, I'm kind of letting him warm up to even just the temp of the air right now, because again, the room is a lot warmer than uh, inside the box. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of water from the tank to here just to kind of get him used to the temp. That's really all I'm doing. It's not like a fish. We don't gotta acclimate like that, but I do not wanna shock him too much with the warm water. This guy is so adorable. Oh my God, I can't get over it. So this is tank water. We're not totally submerging him. We're just putting a little bit of water in there, get him used to it. So adorable. Oh my goodness. Add a little bit more water. Again, we're just getting used to the temp here. Okay, 
It is time. Such a little baby. Be careful here. I'm gonna drop him. I'm gonna put him right here. There he goes. Oh my god. So adorable. Like lightning. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this away. I don't wanna take a chance of him getting stuck on anything. Move that away a little bit. So we will get back to the cutest turtle in the world footage and check on him. But also got some other pickups from Global Fish Co. that I'm excited about. So let's unbox those. So this was a good time to do a water change and move the scat over to the 300 because I've got new fish coming in. Um, I'm also doing a water change on this guy. I just did a small 25 percent. I think I'm just going to leave him in here for a little while until I decide where I think the best tank to put him in uh, a little bit more permanently is. But he's doing fine in there. He's got plenty of room. So uh, yeah, I'm going to leave him down there and uh, we'll get the new arrivals very soon and we will unbox them and put them in. So they have arrived. Got these guys from Global Fish Co. I'm in my usual unboxing spot. Let's uh Unbox it, check them out. Nice. You're welcome. doing here I don't want to I don't want to pick this bag up because these guys are actually kind of fragile so these are baby long nose gar as some of you guys might know I recently lost one of my long nose gars what's the plural on that uh, to the alligator gar unfortunately I think it was an accident but either way the alligator gar killed my smaller long nose gar, he was still probably like 18 inches. He was got some size on him. Um, we still got one more big long nose gar, is probably closer to 30 inches. And uh, that one's doing fine. But I, I really, really like the long nose gar. I think they're my favorites. And uh, Global Fish had a bunch of them come in and they were a good deal. So I grabbed up three of them. So I'm going to let them float and warm up to temp. And then we will strain them out in a net and drop them in. Um, a lot of people ask me with my quarantine systems why I put the egg crate um, dividing off the sponge filters and it's actually more than just to divide off the sponge filters although I don't need heaters right now it's also to divide off the heaters but there is a reason um, other than just to keep fish away from the heaters um, 
well, first of all, I will say that like things like stingrays, I don't want anywhere near a heater. Most tanks I would keep heaters in sumps, but obviously I'm not running sumps on these. So it is a good way to keep like new stingrays or any kind of fish away from the heaters. Also, a lot of different types of fish eat sponge filters. As you see, this one was getting eaten pretty good. That keeps the fish away from the sponges altogether. Nothing can eat them. And uh, the last thing is when you get a bunch of cords and stuff in a bare bottom tank like this, with quarantine, I wanna have a bare bottom tank. I'll emphasize that. But when you get a bunch of cords and hoses and you know, you got a lot of um, aeration, you got a lot of surface ag agitation from the uh, sponges themselves, fish can get caught up and hurt in that stuff. And they like to hide behind anything you can. So if you have nothing to hide behind, they're gonna choose this stuff and it's just a good way for fish to get hurt, unfortunately. And I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but it's true, I've seen it a bunch of times. Uh, the fish will spook or something and then jump into here and they'll get hurt on all that stuff. So it's to try to avoid that. Now, these guys are so small, they're so skinny, that they're actually gonna be able to fit in here and that's gonna make having the egg crate in here or the lighting diffuser, I should say, in here even more dangerous. So. I'm gonna just take it out and they'll do their thing. I think it's uh, a better scenario for these particular fish to not have it in here. But I did want to explain to people why I put that in here because I do get asked all the time. So we're gonna come back and check on these guys in a little bit once they've settled in. This one looks all right. These two are very, very stressed out, but they will be okay. Let's uh, give them some time and we'll come back. And we can't forget about our new friend here who, oh, I scared him again. But I've got lots of footage of this guy over the past few weeks. He's been eating really well, seems to eat almost anything. The first day or two, the first couple days he didn't eat, and I noticed that he started developing a little bit of what I think was a shell fungus. Let's so get some good footage here. I think he was starting to get some fungus um, or bacteria on his shell and I added a heat lamp and it went away like within two days of adding the heat lamp. And he likes to get up there and uh, get his rays. Um, for the most part, these are almost fully aquatic turtles, but uh, most turtles will appreciate the UV light of some sort, or at least the heat. I think one of the problems was maybe the temp of this tank is a little too cold. It is um, on an independent system. I think it's probably like 78 now. It's gone down the past couple weeks, which doesn't help where the weather is getting a little cooler. So my basement is getting a little cooler, but he loves the heat lamp. Like I said, he is eating anything I put in there now. Super responsive, what an awesome turtle. Very excited. Um, again, they are pretty much fully aquatic, but they're gonna benefit and enjoy the heat from what I've seen, he enjoys the light. And uh, females can become egg bound. So if you were to have a female, which we don't know the sex of this one yet, but if you were to have a female, you could have problems in the future if you were to try to uh, leave it as a fully aquatic animal. So um, plan for them to be able to get out of water until you know if it's a male or not. And then once they're adult size, you can kind of keep them as a fully aquatic. You could put them in an aquarium or something like that. And now it's been about a week and everything is doing really well. Um, this smallest long nose gar here, I have not seen this one eat yet. He is a little bit more skittish. Um, I don't know, maybe it has eaten once I've walked away, but I haven't actually seen it eat. The other two have been eating just plenty. They eat a lot. And you can see that one's got a full belly still from yesterday. Probably eats all the food actually. But those two definitely eat. I'm not too concerned with this little one yet because he seems really active. 
Actually, he seems hungry right now. Maybe he just doesn't like what I've been feeding. But I think we'll get him out of that, and he will start taking whatever I offer eventually. Yeah, look, he's hungry. But these guys are awesome. Thank you guys at Global Fish Co. As always, I've done business with you guys a few times now. Um, fish always come in alive and kicking and looking good, and always happy doing business with them. And that is pretty much it for this video, guys. As you can see, the African Tiger Scat is doing really well in the 300. I haven't really seen him pick on anything, so um, that's good news. Uh, everybody seems to be doing really good in this tank behind me. But that's it for this video, guys. As always, I thank you for watching. I ask you to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell for notifications. If you like the video, like the video. Follow me on Instagram at Off the Deep End Aquatics, and I will see you guys in that next one. Thanks.